Mentos in South Philly. 26 East Oregon Ave. Philly's baseball campaign. First start in three years, I think. Let's bring this thing to life. Take that air filter off. A strong you can spray right down in there. Like Cesar well, this usually does it. it out. Good. <laughs> it's dying at one point. You mess with the throttle a bit. I think it's kind of what you can get at the point of attack that, that commands a double team and it actually make, make plays. And I like, I like his hand uses. <laughs> He doesn't have Once gas up in the line yet. Yeah. Oh, what do you know? All right, so that was a first look at my new project here. Now that I'm home for the summer and I have some time to kick back and relax a little bit and start on something different. Um, and the uh, the spring plow day, man, this is pretty much over. So I got the 210 home and I cleaned it all up. I got all the PA plow day mud and stuff off of it. And uh, right now I'm just tweaking it a little bit. Um, it did really good at the plow day, but I was having a couple issues with the carburetor. Um, it was a little bit out of adjustment and the, the engine wouldn't run right when you put it under a load like when you drop the plow on the ground. So I've been messing with the carb adjustment and I'm also going to check the breaker points gap because ever since I swapped this engine into this tractor two years ago I haven't uh, I haven't really messed with the breaker points at all so I'm just going to check the gap and make sure that's good. Hopefully that'll, um, that'll get rid of the knocking. Um, but the 210's kind of gone back to the play tractor, the garden tractor, the toy, and it's an ongoing project. Um, but I wanted something a little bit different to mess around with, just to make a little side cash. Uh, so I brought this thing home. Um, I don't think this tractor's made an appearance in any of my videos before. I'm sure I've talked about it a handful of times, um, and I've been meaning to bring this thing home for quite a while now. I just haven't, uh... Haven't had the chance to, being away from school and everything, and I had to free up some space. Um, so I sold the 316. Uh, more on that in another video. Um, but now that I'm, I'm home for the summer and I have a little extra time and space, I decided to start working on this. So this is this tractor actually has a little bit of a story behind it. Um, it's a 2000 John Deere LT-155, little lawn tractor. 
and it actually belonged to my uncle. Um, like I said, this tractor has a bit of a story behind it. My grandfather and my uncle bought this thing brand new from the John Deere dealership in uh, 1999 or 2000, I believe it was. Uh, they split the cost. They went halves on it. And uh, a friend of theirs gave them an old wheel horse. It was like an old, I think it was like an old B100 or something like that um, with a Kohler engine. And it, it, the thing didn't run. It was a project. It didn't run and it didn't have a mower deck with it. So they, it was useless to them. They couldn't use it. Um, and at the time, you know, 15, 16, 17 years ago, they were living on our farm, which is not here anymore, unfortunately. But uh, we had the farm bulldozed. My grandfather sold the farm so we could build up this uh, this housing development that you can see now. Um, but 15 years ago, my grandfather and my uncle still lived on the farm, and uh, the grass was getting high because all the all my grandfather's old farm equipment would sit around and uh, just collect dust in the yard, and they needed something to keep the weeds down and to mow, you know, like around the house and in between the trees and up and down the driveway and stuff like that. So they bought this little John Deere LT-155. Um, now, being you know stubborn stuck in their ways they had to have a uh, they had to have a john deere and it had to come from the dealership it couldn't be like a lowe's or home depot special and it had to have a kohler engine because oh kohler's american made and everything um unfortunately today that's not true but <laughs> i'm not going to get involved in that um but like i said they're stubborn stuck in their ways they had to have a john deere from our dealership and it had to have a kohler engine and for them, I mean, they didn't have a lot of money, so um, the most cost-effective machine for them to buy back then was a little LT series. So they picked up this LT-155. As you can see, it's not the prettiest tractor. It's not in the best condition, um, cosmetically anyway. But this thing has a lot of hours on it. I don't know exactly how many hours. Um, these things didn't come with an hour meter, but I'd have to say, if I had to guess, probably close to a 1,000. Um, this tractor did a lot of mowing around the farm. There was just a lot of grass and a lot of weeds and stuff to mow. And it was used, I mean, it, my uncle took very good care of it mechanically, but it was rode hard and it did do a lot of long hours of mowing. Um, first thing you can notice about it, it's very dirty. Um, my uncle never really bothered to hose it off or whatever. Um, it sat in his shop on the farm when the farm was here. He had a shop in it. He kept it there for about four or five years inside. And then when he sold the farm, when we left the farm behind and my uncle moved up the lane um, to his new house, the tractor sat outside next to his house for probably about two or three years under trees, too. He lives in the woods, so um, the thing collected a lot of dust and dirt and grime, as you can see. Um, and he, I guess he just never bothered to clean it off. Uh, and then he uh, later on, he ended up getting a shop built, a little shop, a little garage built put next to his house um so he kept it in there and uh my grandfather actually borrowed this tractor um back in 2007 and 2008 when we were first moving in here um when our houses had just been built um he actually borrowed this tractor from my uncle to mow his lawn uh th this was before he bought the uh, cub cadet gt 2550 um but in the meantime he he was he actually wanted to look for like an old John Deere 318 or something like that, but back then we didn't know anything about buying them used, and I didn't know where you could get one, otherwise I would have helped him find one. Um, he's like, oh, I can't buy one of those new anymore, so I'm going to buy a Cub Cadet because it's shaft-driven and it has a Kohler engine. So he ended up buying a Cub, which turned out to be a piece of junk, unfortunately. Um, but... Before that, he uh, he used to use this little LT-155. He'd drive it up and down the lane to and from my uncle's house whenever he needed it. And uh, this thing would get the job done. I mean, it's it's a small tractor for an acre, a little over an acre yard, but it got the job done. Um, he did that for about half a year, maybe, before he finally bought the Cub. So, um, and I used to ride on his lap with him sometimes. I'm, I'm going back quite a ways, though. Um, but anyway, um, so how did I end up with this tractor? Well, about three years ago, my uncle ended up with, he got a, a cheap deal on a Cub Cadet uh, Super LT 1554. It was also a piece of junk, um, but he, he fixed it up. He was he got it real cheap from a friend of his, and he was looking to actually fix it up and sell it. But he, it has a 54-inch deck, so it took him like 20 minutes to get his yard mode with it. So he just he decided to keep it and, um, and use that instead. And the LT 155 just kind of hibernated to the corner of his garage. And it sat there for about three years. And then uh, about a year ago, he, he came to me and said, Hey, I got this old John Deere taking up space in my garage. You want it? 
I said, yeah, I'll take it. Um, but I, I couldn't bring it home just yet. I had to get uh, I had to get the 316 sold, and I had to uh, free up some extra space. Um, but now that I'm finally home for the summer, I got the 316 sold, and I need another project. I finally uh, found time to bring it home. I'm actually fix I'm actually fixing this thing up for a family friend of ours. Um, some of you guys may remember a couple years ago, a couple summers ago, I posted a couple videos of me mowing a huge field with the uh, with the old 316, the nice one. Um, the people that live there just bought a brand new mower so they can mow that field themselves, but they were looking for a backup, uh, you know, something that would be reliable in case they needed it, something that they could beat up a little bit. And uh, that, that field has a lot of rough ground and low spots and stuff, so, um, which this tractor has been mowing rough ground its whole life pretty much um like i said it's been well maintained but um <clears throat> i figured it would be a suitable fit for them for their property just as a backup mower i mean it's it's not it's not the perfect machine but for them it's just right and i offered it to them for a deal they couldn't refuse so i'm fixing it up for them so um that's why i brought it home and that's why i wanted to tinker with it a little bit um typical late 90s early 2000s john deere uh, broken plastic hood <laughs> they weren't uh, John Deere back in this time was not known to have sturdy hoods um, but th the story behind how this hood broke is actually kind of funny you can see there's the the leftover pieces from the section that broke um, but the story how this broke is kind of funny actually um, my uncle has a John Deere 444 front end loader from the late 70s um, that he uses for his dump truck business his stone and gravel and topsoil business um, and he had it at his house one day. He was grading his gravel driveway with it. And this, I guess this was before he had this, before he had his garage built and he kept this thing inside. Um, this tractor was sitting out in the yard and he backed the loader into it and broke the hood, busted it all to hell. So, <laughs> um, it's kind of funny how that happens, but, um, he didn't really care to replace it because he was just going to get a new, he, he ended up getting the cub anyway and he put this one off to the side. Um... So, this tractor does need a little bit of work done to it. Like I said, mechanically it's been very well maintained, but cosmetically, uh, not so much. Um, the first, well, first and foremost, what I'm going to do is pressure wash it, clean it all up. And then, uh, I, uh, I got a home maintenance kit for it to tune it up. You can see it has a little Kohler Command CV-15S. Uh, single cylinder engine not the first one that I've worked on these little Kohler command singles are very reliable and very uh, Very straightforward to work on and uh, my uncle's you know replaced parts and things on it here and there over time um, I had to get a new battery for it a cheap little Napa lawn and garden battery because the battery that was in the machine was junk um, And the thing wouldn't crank over it wouldn't even bother to crank over after we let it sit on the charger So I, I just went and replaced the battery um, like I said, I'm going to get, I'm going to get it all tuned up. I got a home maintenance kit from the dealer. It's like 40 bucks. It's basically everything you need to tune the machine up. Um, it's got, it comes with two quarts of, uh, turf guard, John Deere turf guard 10W30 oil, um, which I'm actually not going to run in this tractor, um, cause that's what the X570 uses, but it comes with the oil, comes with the air filters or air filter, oil filter, pre-cleaner fuel filter and spark plug um, so I'm going to give it the whole treatment and uh, get it all tuned up and running good and strong um, and I also I should have shown this before but uh, I don't know why but my uncle broke it in with mobile one oil back when it was brand new that was that's the only oil it's ever had in it since it was new so I figured why change it and uh, I'm gonna I got some mobile one I got a couple quarts of mobile one 10w30 so I'm gonna run that in it too um, the engine runs pretty good. It doesn't seem to burn any oil. It's real quiet. These Kohler commands run really quiet, which is good for a single cylinder engine. Um, but the oil looks real clean. It doesn't seem to burn hardly any of it. It smokes a little bit on startup, and sometimes when it's cold, it smokes a little bit, but, um, otherwise it's not too bad. And then, uh, obviously the hood, just the top section needs to be replaced. These, these these older John Deere's with the plastic, the, the early ones with the plastic hoods have a top and a bottom section. Not like the new ones where it's all one piece. Um, so I did buy a new top section for the hood as you can see here. Um, I bought it on eBay for like a hundred bucks. It's just like a cheap aftermarket uh, Chinese one. But it beats spending 300 something bucks at a Deere dealer. Um, and it's just a couple bolts. You take the bottom section or take the top section off and then you can bolt the new one on. 
and I got a set of decals to go with it too. So I'm not the best when it comes to applying decals, um, but it's not really that hard to do. I'll worry about that when I get to it. Like I said, this is going to be, I'm selling this to my friend for a backup mower, so it's not going to, uh, <clears throat> it doesn't have to look perfect, but I can't sell it to him with a busted hood because it's just, it, you know, this tractor deserves better care. Like I said before, it's got sentimental value to me. It's one of the last pieces of equipment left from our uh, farm before the farm got demolished. So I didn't want to just list it on Craigslist and uh, sell it to some stranger and never see it again. I wanted it to go to a good home where I know it'll be taken care of and I'll be able to see it again and maybe you know work on it for them every once in a while if they have issues with it. So um, here's just another look at it. It's in better condition than it, it seems, but everything works on it. Um, it's got a 38 inch deck. Um, the 38 inch, or the, the decks on these LT series are not the best. They're pretty thin steel, but it's an entry level lawn tractor. I mean, you can't expect, you can't expect very high quality from it, but for the amount of hours this thing has on it and for how much wear and tear and abuse this thing has gone through, um, it doesn't know us really anything. You can see the front gauge wheel, actually both front gauge wheels on the mower deck broke off. My uncle had to weld them back on, as you can see. Um, if you guys remember, a couple years ago I had an LT133 that I got off of my uncle's next door neighbor. Um, that thing had a bagger on it, and that, that was in much worse shape. I had to change the dry belt, I had to tune it up, I had to rebuild the carburetor because the thing would take five minutes to start when you would start cranking it take five minutes to do anything. The hood was completely junk. I mean, all the tires were flat. That was a mess. Um, luckily, this one isn't that bad. But uh, now, I, I, I mean, this isn't my first rodeo with the LT series, so it should be much, much easier. This should be a breeze to fix fix up. I had to weld the gauge wheels on that mower deck, too, and I had to paint them over because both of the gauge wheels on that one were broke off, too, which kind of sucked. Um, my uncle did kind of a shitty job with a stick welder. You can you can see the welds that he put on there to, hold, to, bra to brace the wheels up. Um, I'm going to cut that off and weld it on with my other uncle's MIG welder and then, you know, grind it down, paint it up and everything and make it look half decent. Um, and then I'll undercoat the deck, sharpen the blades and everything. Um, the seat's actually in really good shape. I think my uncle kept the trash bag over it or kept some kind of cover over it for most of its life. Um, there's a little bit of discoloration. I'm not really sure what that's from. Um, but it's not all torn up or broke or anything, which is great. So I'm going to see if I can find some kind of cleaner that'll take the discoloration out of it. Oh yeah, the other problem. Uh, <laughs> unfortunately, living in my uncle's garage for several years um, in the back corner, um, the mice found their way into this machine, so they left a pretty nice present for me. <laughs> That's going to be fun to clean out. Um, as you saw earlier in this video when we were trying to get the thing started, when we were trying to wake it up, uh, there were a lot of there was a lot of mouse hair and stuff inside the the flywheel shroud. We had to take this all apart and clean it all up. Um, I'm going to take that apart again and make sure it's all clean and everything because you can't have a mouse nest inside your engine that just builds up a lot of heat. So I'll clean the cooling fins and everything like I usually do. Um, I'm just glad they didn't get to any wires or anything because that would have been trouble. Um, my uncle replaced the ignition coil on this a few years ago. Because it would get hot and shut off and then it wouldn't start till it cooled down again. Which is typical. I mean, I remember I had to replace the coil on my LT133 because it was basically doing the same thing. For some reason, the ignition coils on these Kohlers are known to be weak and they, they crap out on you pretty quickly. Um, and then my uncle also replaced the starter. I don't know, if, I don't know what the deal with the starter was. Um, but this is a, a much newer one. It's got a John Deere tag on it, so it's not that old. So that's good. A couple extra, a couple bonuses, I guess you want to say. Um, he might replace the starter solenoid too. I'm not sure though. Um, you, you have your solenoid, then you have a bunch of relays down there. It's kind of an interesting setup, but this is an entry level lawn tractor. I mean, um, this is one step up from your Scott Saber uh, L LAD series. Um, they're not the sturdiest tractors built, but they are very reliable for what they are, as long as you don't abuse them. And this thing has had a lot of hours on it, but my uncle has taken good care of it. I mean, he used to mow around the farm, and he'd always be hitting rocks and ruts and stuff with it. So, um, the tires do have some holes and patches in them, but I think he, at this point he's put tubes in them because this thing sat in the corner of his garage for like three years, and uh, the tires never leaked. So, that was good. Um, 
But yeah, they've been patched and fixed before, as you can see. But they still have good tread left, and I, I, I'm pretty sure he's got tubes in them, so that's a plus. Um, so yeah, let's uh, start this thing up. Parking brake set. Full throttle is choke. I hate that on these cheap machines, but oh well. That was a little weird. <clears throat> Doesn't usually backfire like that on startup. I might have not shut the throttle off all the, all the way last time I used it. The idle on this is a little bit too low. I think uh, I think it might need the carburetor clean. Or if there is an adjustment, I'll just turn the uh, idle up a little bit. But that's right about where it should be. It's got a little uh, tough torque K51 hydrostatic rear end in it. Not the best hydro, but it's a little bit better than the K46 that they use in like the L, LA and D series machines. Um, I'm not sure if it's a sealed unit or not, but if it if it is, and I'll change the oil and do all that stuff to it. But this machine hasn't really mowed any hills in its lifetime, aside from in my grandparents' backyard over there at the end of the driveway. But it only mowed that a couple times. So this transmission shouldn't have much wear to it. Um, seems to work pretty good. And here it is in all its glory. <laughs> Nothing special, but this thing does have a little sentimental value to me. So I'm going to take good care of it, clean it up, and tune it up, and uh, make sure it's fully functional for uh, the next the next owner. It's all there too. I think I think headlights might have been optional on these LT series. I've seen some that have the four-way key switch, where one of the the key settings is uh, headlights. Um, but this tractor doesn't have that. I mean, it has headlights and it has wires going to the headlights, but um, I don't think my uncle and my grandfather ordered the tractor with headlights. So it's not like they were mowing at night all the time anyway, so it doesn't really matter. The other thing too, uh, I think my uncle got fed up with the Rio switch, the little safety switch, and he cut the switch out. Um, but looking under the hood, I actually can't see where he cut the wires, so I might have to pull the battery out and do a little digging down in there to see if I can find the wires because um, it still cuts out the power when you try and mow in reverse so it's not like this, the safety switch is bypassed so I'll have, to, I'll have to fix that fuel cap on the side this is another thing that I like about these um, these little John Deere entry level tractors um, not like your LLA or D, or D series but the LT series in particular they have the fuel fill on the side and they have the, the mower deck height adjustment knob on the floor um, that's a design that they've used for years. The, uh, even the brand new X570 has those same two things. It has a fuel cap on the side and the, the height adjustment on the floor, which is which are a couple of John Deere's better ideas. So they, you can see that they've carried on with those designs for quite a while now. really good. I mean, there's not much to these little Polar Command singles, so I don't think it's ever had the carburetor apart either. I mean, that's wide open right there. Take it out for a quick spin. This is about as fast as it'll go. <laughs> Now 
manual PTO, pretty straightforward. The mower deck's really quiet too. It cuts okay, I mean it's not great, but it does have a lot of wear to it. I'll have to sharpen the blades anyway. It is pretty quiet. I don't know if my uncle will ever bothered to replace the bearings in it or not. But I'm not hearing any weird noises or anything, so and it seems to cut okay. doesn't smoke under a load or anything it doesn't really seem to work too too hard so that's good the steering's a little stiff but I think it just needs to be greased The idle is awfully low. I'm kind of concerned that it might not be getting enough oil pressure at such a low idle. Like I said, if there's an adjustment on the carburetor, um, I'll just adjust the idle and turn it, turn it up a little bit. Um, otherwise, these little Walbro carburetors on these things are not very hard to clean out and put back together. So, um, so yeah, I'm going to fix this thing all up and make it look nice again. This tractor does have some sentimental value to me, so I'm going to make it look good and uh, make sure it's ready to go to its next owner and doesn't have any issues. So, uh, yeah, I just figured this will be a quick project. I figure I'll have this done probably by next week, the end of next week. Um, so, I got all the parts for it, so uh, I'll probably post that in another video before I deliver it to its new owner. I just figured you guys might want to see this real quick before uh, I get started working on it, since it's never shown up in any of my videos, at least from what I can remember. So... So uh, this will be my new project for a little while. Thanks for watching, guys. Please comment, rate, and subscribe.